Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be looking at the brand new MacBook Pro with the M2 Max chip. And in this video we'll be doing a bunch of productivity and gaming benchmarks and we'll be specifically comparing it with the previous generation MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip and we'll aim to answer this simple question, should you be upgrading to the M2 Max chip or is it all going to be a huge waste of money? So if you haven't subscribed already then please consider subscribing and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac gaming news. So the MacBook Pro with the M2 Max chip has just been released. And from the outside, the new 2023 MacBook Pros look pretty much identical to the ones that were released in 2021 with the M1 Pro and the M1 Max chip. So therefore, to see any differences, we're going to have to look internally. Aside from processor and graphics improvements, which I'll come to in a moment, there are a handful of additional features from the M2 generation which you might be interested in, including an upgrade to Wi-Fi 6E, as well as Bluetooth version 5.3. The HDMI port now supports HDMI 2.1, which now allows you to connect an 8K display. And you can also spec out the computer with 96 gigabytes of unified memory. However, most people aren't gonna be that interested in these kind of peripheral upgrades. The core of what makes the M2 Max chip interesting is the fact that we now have a performance boost. And the M2 Max now includes 12 CPU cores, consisting of 8 performance cores and 4 efficiency cores, which is 2 additional efficiency cores compared to the M1 Max. And this has pretty substantial performance improvements. So for example, when we're running the Geekbench 5 benchmark, we're going to be comparing the M1 Max chip on the left with the M2 Max on the right. And here you can see a pretty substantial boost of around 17% both in single core and multi-core scores. Furthermore, we've also done a benchmark using Cinebench, and this will test the relative CPU rendering speed between the M1 Max and the M2 Max. Here we can see a CPU single core score increase of 11.85%. However, what's surprising here is that the multi-core score actually increases by 20.52%, which is really substantial. So how about real world testing as well? So what we're gonna be doing is an encode test using DaVinci Resolve on one of my 4K projects. And this should definitely take advantage of the M2 Max's two video encode engines. So in my test, the M2 Max on the right has managed to finish the 4K project at five minutes 27, whereas the M1 Max on the left is still lagging behind and only manages to finish at six minutes 47. So this is a pretty substantial boost of around 25%. So if you do a lot of video encoding, then this might be worthwhile just for this 25% performance increase. So what about if you're interested in gaming? So here what we're gonna do is a graphics comparison using the game Baldur's Gate 3, which is a native ARM game which has been optimized for the Apple Silicon Mac and has a native metal renderer. We'll be running the resolution 2560 by 1440 at the ultra quality graphics preset. So here if we compare the graphics performance of the M1 Max to the M2 Max on the right, we can see an approximate 28% increase in frame rate. This is pretty surprising because the GPU core count increases from 32 to 38 cores, which is only 18.75%, whereas we're seeing an increase in frame rate in this case of around 20 to 30%. So the game Baldur's Gate 3 is pretty much one of the best looking games that you can play on Apple Silicon Macs at the moment. However, it's worth bearing in mind that this is still in early access and still hasn't received a full release. Developers are still tinkering with optimization, so we could see performance improvements well into the future. So next up is the game Minecraft, which we're going to be running at the 2560 by 1440 resolution. We're using a render distance of 18 with max shadow distance of 12 chunks and simulation distance of 8 chunks. So Minecraft released a few months ago with the native ARM version of Java. However, today we're actually going to be using the Prism Launcher and also Irish Shaders. If you want to find out how to do this, then please make sure to follow the link in the description for my video tutorial. So here we loaded up a pretty default creative world and we're running into pretty impressive frame rates. The M1 Max in this view is pushing around 350 FPS, whereas on the right we're getting around 550 FPS, which is basically a 50% increase in FPS. But this benchmark wouldn't be complete without shaders. So here we're loading up Silver's Vibrant Shaders High at all of these same settings. So here the frame rate difference is much less noticeable. The M1 Max on the left is running about 105-109 FPS, whereas the M2 Max on the right is running about 124-125 FPS. And here the M2 Max is only performing around 15% better than the M1 Max. If we look at this high vantage point where we're really testing the limits of the 18 chunk render distance, the M2 Max on the right seems to be holding its frame rate a lot better, but really what we're seeing here is an incremental upgrade in actual speed. 
So we looked at productivity differences and gaming benchmarks as well. And across the board, we're looking at an approximate 20 to 25% boost in performance. Now the question is, is it worth upgrading to the M2 Max chip? So if you're running an older Intel Mac, then there really is no question. Apple Silicon just runs faster, it runs cooler, and it's gonna be a pretty serious upgrade. However, if you're already running something like the M1 Max chip, then the gains that you're gonna see are gonna be pretty marginal. 20 to 25% boost in speed is nothing to sniff at. However, for most of the people who watch my videos, the M1 Max is already way too powerful for the average user's needs. And so you do work that's far more demanding, for example, 4K exporting, then waiting an extra minute or two per render is not necessarily going to make the biggest difference in the world. Furthermore, it's no longer possible to actually buy the original N1 Max chip at the eye-watering price of £3,299. This model has now been replaced by the 12-core CPU and 38 GPU core M2 Max, which now has a price increase of £450. In terms of percentages, this is an increase of 13.6%, which doesn't sound too bad considering we're getting around a 20 to 25% boost in performance. However, like I said earlier, this is probably going to be overkill for the majority of Mac users. Furthermore, if you do upgrade and you do a trade-in deal for your M1 Max, Apple's only going to offer you a fraction of the actual value of the computer. Now, obviously, you could sell your Mac with the M1 Max chip at a much better rate than the actual trade-in value. However, the point still stands that the M1 Max is already an excellent computer for most people, and the majority of users aren't necessarily going to benefit from the performance boosts. So an interesting alternative to the 30 HGPU core version of the M2 Max is also the 30 core GPU version, which comes in at a substantially lower price of £3,349, which is only £150 more than the original M1 Max at the time of release. Now, I haven't managed to test out this machine myself, but I can imagine that the performance is going to be very similar to the original M1 Max, and it's probably going to be better value for the majority of people than the 38 core GPU version, which costs substantially more money. So I've now completed this comparison between the M1 Max and the M2 Max chip. It'd be really interesting to hear what kind of use cases people are gonna go through in order to justify the upgrade from the M1 Max to the M2 Max. Are you doing this for productivity reasons? Do you need faster encode times and blender times? Or are you just looking for a few extra frames in the latest games? If you have any thoughts about this, then please make sure to leave a comment. Will you be upgrading to the M2 Max chip or are you going to wait until the rumored M3 is going to come with the 3 nanometer process, which should bring substantial performance improvements? So no, thank you very much for watching this comparison video. If you have any more requests for benchmarks of different games and software, then please make sure to let me know. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.